Hello YouTubers, this is Anubafar. Well, Verple just released a ghost update for the Warbird. The Warbird Gamble was released over four years ago. Its unique double cam design has since been copied by others. It's my go-to gimbal because of the feeling that this cam gives me. Let's begin. How do you go about updating an icon? Well, you innovate and evolve without upsetting what made the thing an icon to begin with, what made it stand out as superior. The Warbird D is actually a very minor set of changes, two main improvements that address legacy shortcomings. Let me show you and tell you what and why they were changed. By illustrating where this updated gimbal outperforms others, I will help you decide if this is an important upgrade for you or perhaps what you already have is already what you need and this is an upgrade that you can sit out welcome to my hands-on review overview and impressions of the warbird d gimbal from verple i'm going to begin like usual with a very quick rundown of how we got here the mt50 gimbal was where it all began for verple in 2017 warbird gimbal was next verple's second gimbal which was released at the same time as the delta grips in 2018 Warbird is preferred by many because of the design includes that double symmetrical cam. Double symmetry is the only true way to ensure perfectly mirrored proportional force. The double symmetry does have a big drawback in that it's very torque limited. It performs very good at light and medium resistance. It struggles to operate when tuned for very large torque loads and it becomes quickly overwhelmed when using extensions. As I said in the gimbal comparison video, if you plan to use extensions or prefer that very strong feel, the Warbird gimbal, despite having super heavy springs, may not be for you. It shouldn't be something you're looking at. Many installed the biggest springs to get the performance they wanted. The community needed a gimbal that was more capable, and this is why we have the CM2 and CM3. Those use a different cam arrangement, which is much more capable of providing high torque, and it also incorporates a finely adjustable preload and a removable wire. The Warbird D update all comes back to community feedback being heard. Innovations in the upgrades from the CM2 and CM3 are being applied to the Warbird to create the Warbird D. This isn't a one or the other situation where one is better than the other. We actually need both. There's a situation and a use for both. I took the opportunity to have a real Air Force pilot test CM3 as a cyclic on motion platform in the video Real Pilot Fake Helicopter. I also took the opportunity to produce a how-to guide to fully convert CM3 for use as a dead stick for helicopter cyclic. Both of those videos are linked up now and at the end if you'd like some extra perspective. The unboxing is simple. Shipped as a boxed box, the product is packed in high density foam this ensures that nothing shipped could ever arrive with dings or damage. The gimbal includes some extras. Like the CM3 gimbal, there's an updated design on the USB, but with that familiar quick disconnect. It's very important to know that this is not the same plug as some other Verpal devices. This new plug has four leads and not five. I've said in the past that it might be nice for a Verpal if they decide to offer those wires in various lengths on the web store. Some of us might like to buy a spare, or some of us might like to permanently cable manage in several configurations. When I redid the wiring on my own setup, I can now quickly switch between gimbals, but more importantly, because I have both four and five pin plugs in each location, I can change quickly between a throttle, a collective, or a gimbal on my left. I can change between a panel or a gimbal on my right, the plug now lets me use either CM3 or Warbird in the middle. The addition of the plug now to the entire ecosystem is a massive improvement and achieves the following results. Being able to add or remove parts without disturbing your wiring, being able to replace any damaged wire without needing to perform any type of surgery, and honestly in 2023 there's no excuse to buy any product that has a hard wire attached. Warbird D now also includes that familiar auxiliary port, so you're able to daisy chain a gimbal to a panel. Your wiring is now simplified. You can connect more devices while reducing the number of plugs at your PC. Those configurations are achieved within the Verpal software when performing your initial setup. I'm going to say that if you're looking at the market in this range, it's expected and normal for the user to service and tune. You should expect to spend time taking it apart and testing springs and cams. This does ship assembled with standard springs and Avia soft center cams. It will work completely fine out of the box plug and play, but you're going to get a more personal experience if you're willing to put in that extra time. It is designed to be open and adjusted, so there's absolutely no reason to be concerned. The original video for Warbird on how to change cams is exactly the same, and I might prepare an updated video explaining the process to help you out. 
If you decide to use the Verpal mounting solution, you should also know that there is one specific plate for each type of those gimbals. You need to double check at checkout. The very, very low profile of Warbird has always made it very well suited for tabletop use. The Warbird D has a multi-part table mount, which is fantastic and it's super easy to store if not needed, but it expands to have a very wide footprint, and that's included. There are a total of three springs rated standard, heavy, extra heavy. Unlike CM2 and CM3, the gimbal has no additional spring preload per axis, and because of this, your tuning is limited to these three spring tensions. It's also important to note a second difference in the total deflection angle. Warbird has always had a larger deflection of 22 degrees when compared to CM2 and CM3, who, because are designed for extensions, are actually limited to 16 degrees. This changes nothing in performance, and I highlight it only to offer the most complete information to you. Warbird has included with it a set of four cam profiles, which can be identified as a series of bumps, but also just by looking at the curve, you can get a sense of how they're going to behave. Remember that you should never mix your pairs of cams. Two of the same type per axis, please, but you can test using one type in X and the other type in Y. Just ensure that the pairs are the same. This is a great opportunity to mention that you can now take advantage of what's called an omnithrottle using a Z extension. Remove the left Y axis spring, increase the drag, and install a Z adapter for that hybrid HOTAS Space Sim experience. By default, you have a standard spring and Avia soft center installed. Avia style cams have a progressive curve requiring more force as you get further into deflection. This is that familiar torque profile that flight sim pilots expect. Cosmo or Space Cams have a flatter profile that are designed to have a constant force throughout the range. You can deflect from center throughout the full range and feel a flat constant force. Soft center is that slight feedback that you get when crossing from one side to the other. This little bump can help hold the stick in dead center without any dead zone. As this is a high precision device, if calibrated properly, you will still always achieve dead center without adding any dead zone regardless of your choice in cams. The no center option reduces this bump reducing in a smoother traverse. All of this is up to your personal preference. I'm sure that there are jet pilots who like the feel of Cosmo cams, and I myself have flip-flopped back and forth over the years uh, just for testing as developers have messed around with the flight systems for Star Citizen. The point is, you should take the time to test and adjust. So, two features carried over from CM3. One is the drag clutch per axis that can be a game changer for some. The drag clutch offers more than just another aspect of tuning. You may be super happy with your current tune, but may want to address a little bit of drift to which you can apply a very slight bit of drag to control it. You can stop a little bit of stick oscillation when flying. You can fine tune better with this option. If your goal is to achieve a dead stick, you now have two options from Verpal. Just like how I demonstrated in my review for the CM3 gimbal, a dead stick has no spring and no cam. A dead stick will go to and remain exactly where you move it. It'll stay there until you move it somewhere else. We're coming near to the end, so here are some final observations. Its double cam design has always provided the most satisfying and most seamless of flight experiences. CM2 and CM3 were always great and very capable. They're capable of torques that the Warbird simply cannot provide. They are fine, but they've never had that ultra fine feeling. And I think it's funny to think that Verpal began with zap straps and hot glue holding everything together, but have evolved here and there over the years. They've taken the time and work to ensure improvements in design and construction. Internally, everything is milled billet aluminum. Mechanically simple, precise, and some might say very pretty. Each time they release something, there are extra refinements to be found. I saw some questions on social media, which I will answer. The first was, can you apply the same friction as CM3 so that it can be used as a helicopter cyclic? And the answer is yes, of course, you can remove the springs, let the cams rest, and increase the friction, achieving the same effect as CM3. The second was, is the clutch smooth? And would adding some kind of grease make it better? The answer is yes, it's very smooth and it doesn't bind. It's never bound in many hours in flight in DCS despite being quite tight. You may think that the grease might help with longevity and provide some sort of improvements, but adding grease will reduce the friction, and this would also require to use a lot more clamping force to achieve the same force. So I would worry that you might quickly exceed the design capabilities by doing this, by adding grease. I don't feel you should, and I don't personally recommend it, and I don't have any plans to test this kind of modification for myself. And I feel that this is all I need to say about Warbird D. So many have copied this design and Verpal just took what was great and updated it for the modern sim enthusiasts. 
you already have great gear and are happy, there's no need to update unless you're specifically interested in some of the features that are offered here. Value is always calculated as a function of cost against how often you use the part. Expensive things can still be a great value if you consider how long and how often you may be using them. Buy the right gear once. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Don't be shy. Comment your comments in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts and answer questions. Join Nubafire Discord if you want to have a more detailed discussion. Fly safe.